Understanding the evolution of eukaryotic cellular complexity is one of the biggest challenges of modern biology. Current hypothesized process for this important evolutionary event is known as endosymbiosis. The endosymbiotic theory explains the origins of eukaryotic cellular organelles, such as mitochondria and chloroplasts, and was greatly advanced in the 1960s by the work of Lynn Margulis. Over the last half century, the theory of eukaryotic evolution has advanced through the genome sequencing technologies becoming more available. The idea of symbiosis applies to all organisms across the tree of life as an integral part of evolution as organisms gain survival advantage by quid pro quo between them. Symbiotic relationships in which two species are dependent on each other for coevolution is crucial for the evolution of eukaryotic cells. The endosymbiotic theory of mitochondria holds that mitochondria evolved from an autotrophic bacterium that was engulfed by a larger heterotrophic eukaryotic cell. This eukaryotic cell itself first arose when the anaerobic prokaryote lost its cell wall and the flexible membrane underneath began to grow and fold in on itself, essentially creating a nucleus and other internal organelles. Eventually, the eukaryotic cell was able to engulf prokaryotes, and thus the endosymbiosis of mitochondria came when a eukaryote engulfed but did not digest an autotrophic bacterium. This bacterium is thought to be alpha-proteobacteria, a bacterium that creates energy through photosynthesis. The eukaryote then began a symbiotic relationship with the bacterium, where the eukaryote provided protection and nutrients, but the prokaryote provided additional energy through its respiratory cellular machinery. This mutual beneficial relationship became permanent over time, and the prokaryote thus became completely dependent on the eukaryote, as it lost some of its genes needed for independent life and tra transferred others to the nucleus of the eukaryote. The genes of the respiratory machinery became a mitochondrion, and thus the origin of mitochondria is through an endosymbiotic process. A very similar endosymbiotic theory hypothesizes the origin of chloroplasts. In this process, a eukaryote with a mitochondria engulfs but does not digest a photosynthetic cyanobacterium. The eukaryote and the cyanobacterium share a symbiotic relationship, and over time, the symbiont cyanobacterium loses its genes and becomes a chloroplast. Now, while prokaryotes were involved in these endosymbiotic relationships are up for some debate, the heterotrophic prokaryote used cellular respiration to intake oxygen and convert organic molecules to energy. Some suggest that these prokaryotes were archaea, while others suggest they were eubacteria. Those who argue in favor of archaea do so because DNA sequence comparisons suggest that archaeans are more closely related to eukaryotes than eubacteria. Those who argue in favor of eubacteria do so because the fact that mitochondria have their own DNA, RNA, and ribosomes I'll support the idea that the symbiotic relationship requires an aerobic bacterium. Primary endosymbiosis refers to the engulfment of a bacterium by another free-living organism. Secondary endosymbiosis refers to the engulfment of the product of primary endosymbiosis itself by another free-living eukaryote. Secondary endosymbiosis has occurred several times and is the reason for some extremely diverse groups of algae and other eukaryotes as well as the unique topography of plastic membranes. Overall, the origin of eukaryotes and the organelles present in eukaryotes hold a significant role in evolutionary biology of early life. Eukaryotes were first able to evolve from prokaryotes through the loss of the cell wall and folding of the more flexible membrane underneath. Once eukaryotes formed, an endosymbiotic process is responsible for the origin of specific organelles such as mitochondria and chloroplasts. Good day, news scientists! Today we will be discussing the transformation of prokaryotes to eukaryotes. You may be asking yourself, what are these funky terms? Well, a prokaryote is a single cell organism that includes things like bacteria. A eukaryote has the DNA or genetic information and chromosomes in a thing called the nucleus. Eukaryotes are all of the other living things besides bacteria. The largest difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes are these membrane brown structures that eukaryotes have that prokaryotes do not have. Membranes are like walls that hold certain structures together. An example of one of these membrane bound structures is the nucleus. For eukaryotes, the DNA is in the nucleus. But in the prokaryote, the DNA is not bound by a membrane. Eukaryotes also have a part called mitochondria, where energy is made in the cell, or a part called chloroplast in plants that prokaryotes do not have. Now that you know the difference between the two, we will discuss how one transformed into the other. The process of prokaryotes changing into eukaryotes can be described by the fancy name endosymbiosis. This process is built on teamwork, the cells meeting each other. Watch how as this little bug slithers along and absorbs what it eats and grows bigger.
In the beginning, there were just prokaryotic cells. The wall that held the cell together was lost, and the membrane that was underneath folded in and created the first nucleus and other organelles. Then this first eukaryotic cell ate one of the prokaryotic bacteria cells and turned it into the mitochondria. They expressed teamwork because the big outside eukaryotic provided protection for the small prokaryote. In return, the prokaryote gave the big cell more energy. Both were happy, and thus eukaryotes continued to develop. The same process could be used to describe the creation of chloroplasts in plant cells as well. Now you may ask yourself, what's the big deal? Who cares whether these weirdly named things were created? In order to develop complex forms of life, like you and all other living things, more complex cells needed to be created. After the evolution of eukaryotes from prokaryotes, the cells could be changed to make more complex things, but so the plants and animals and humans today were able to be possible. See you next time on Science for Dummies.